So here we have a demonstration of the ionising effect of alpha radiation using the spark counter. Uh, in the holder here we have a alpha emitting source uh, which is emitting alpha particles in the direction of the back plate there. Now that plate uh, is a metal plate with wire stretched in front of it and a voltage across there is about sort of just under 5000 volts. Now when the alpha particles stream across here uh, and they go through the air just before the back plate they actually ionise the air. Okay, so what that does is split the air into ions and that allows the electricity to discharge across the wires there, resulting in that um, spark. Um, well, so the alpha particles, um, they ionise the air and they form positive and negative ions and when these recombine, that's what gives that blue flash out there. Okay, uh, the actual noise that you can hear is the noise of the air heating up. Um, it's the same way that sort of the sound of the lightning gives a source. Okay, but what we can see is also the penetrating power of alpha radiation. If I just dip this piece of paper down through there, you can see that it's not even penetrating enough to get through that sheet of paper to continue to form those sparks on the spark panel there. Um, now, this wouldn't work if we used a beta or gamma source in here because they're not ionising enough to cause the ionisation of the air to allow the sparks to form. So, as well as being a good demonstration of the uh, penetrating power, if I just pull this back up to something as well, you can see that there's hardly any chance of the, the uh, alpha particles penetrating the air to get there. If I put it back, you can see they're going tens of dozen there. But the beta or the gamma sources in there wouldn't be enough to even ionise that air to allow those sparks to form.